Hey, She Slayers, and welcome to another episode of She Slays the Day podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Lauren Brunslick. Okay, well, this is another moment of Lauren becomes a more mature adult, or this is a story, um, where instead of raging and going girl riot on someone, I chose to stay calm and kind and take the high road. And currently, as we stand, I'm glad I did, uh, but the outcome is still to be determined. So here's the story. So a particular group of students at a particular college reached out to me and said, hey, we'd love for you to come speak at, um, to our group. And I'm like, yeah, I, I love speaking to students. Sounds good. So then they're like, okay, you need, um, to up, you have to like fill out this link to be able to speak, you know, as a guest at a group at the college. And I'm like, sounds good. So they ask for a CV or resume. Great. Okay. Go to Canva, download it, upload it. Okay. They ask for my license, like proof I'm licensed. Okay. Yep. No problem. Sounds good. Download, upload and malpractice. Yep. Okay. Sounds good. So send that in. Well, I get an email them like a day later asking that the like review committee or whatever would like a more professional resume and asking if I have a professional resume that I can send in. Now at this point I'm or CV and I'm wondering, did I for like, did I just not send it? Cause it didn't say more professional. It just said like, do you have a professional one um, that you can send? And I was like, so I'm thinking, well, maybe I just didn't click attach. Like I downloaded it, found it, but then for like somehow I didn't send it. And so here's where I'm going to give you a little bit of information about my CV, because I think it's important for those that are wondering, what's a CV versus a resume? I don't know. I'm sure there's a very uh, good detailed explanation you can find online. But I know that a couple of years ago when I went into Canva and typed in curriculum vitae, this was a template that came up and I thought it was pretty schnazzy. So I am self-employed. I have my own podcast. Typically, if somebody wants me to speak, um, they ask and like I give them, I've given this CV out probably 15 times and it's always like, sweet. So I think it's pretty cool because it's a little more modern looking. So like at the top um, there, you almost like how Facebook has like your Facebook banner, not like your profile photo, but it's got like the banner. And so it's a very, you know, let's say like two inches, um, across the whole page. And there's a picture of me adjusting a baby there. And it says like, hi, I'm Dr. Lauren Brunswick and like cool font. And then below that it has like, I'm a graduate from Northwestern in 2010 and I moved to Rice Lake, Wisconsin, blah, 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 two kids. And then under that, there's like maybe like a one and a half by three three inch photo. I mean, small, maybe even smaller of like a family photo of me and my husband and my kids. And then it's like experience. And then it has, you know, like my clinic, my yada, yada, my yada, yada. Then it's got other words. I don't know what the difference between experience and something else. So then that's where I have that. I, you know, am the founder of a nonprofit uh, and I was a coach for a group and then they're blah, blah, blah. And then there's like another small picture of me speaking on a stage because then the next part is like, here's where I've spoken at. And then there's more just information on there. So all in all, there is a picture across the top of me adjusting a baby that says, hi, I'm Dr. Lauren. Then there's all the information that I would have on my normal resume, um, except There is a picture of me speaking, like a small one and a half by three inch picture of me speaking on a stage and a small one and a half by three inch picture of me, uh, my family. It's a really cute resume and I'm, I'm, I'm proud of it. I obviously, and I'm not going to lie. If I asked, you know, if I was hiring and I got 20 resumes and I got this one, I would be like, Damn, I think it shows my personality. I think it has all the information, but there was like some thought put into the experience of reading this resume. Okay, so now we continue with the story. So I get an email um, about a day later after submitting all the information asking for a professional resume or CV. Um, that the group is asking for. And so I respond, like, because again, I'm like, maybe 
they, I didn't attach it. And I say, is there any information the group is looking for that wasn't on the CV I sent? Okay. Just asking for clarification here. And I get back, um, I think the group wants something more formal and traditional and without pictures. That's what I thought they wanted. I just go into a rage fest. Um, So this is when Lauren goes into a rage fest, everybody hears about it. Kirby hears about it. My staff hears about it before we do our shift meeting. And they're Okay, is that professional? No. But I'm just like, what the hell? Okay, so do you know how I wanted to respond? I wanted to respond with, no, you're being ridiculous and old school by needing the information I sent you to look uglier on a piece of paper. What I sent you has all the valid information. I just made it look good and it made you feel uncomfortable. Like, no. I also wanted to say, I spent an hour to an hour and a half putting a lot of thought into originally creating this. Um, I'm not, this is not disrespectful. It's well designed and cool looking. Um, And you need to take the stick, the committee needs to take the stick out of their ass and realize that all the information is there. I'm sorry that it didn't look how they got boring resumes otherwise. I also wanted to say, listen, I was asked to speak to this group. I'm not trying to like, I didn't solicit this group and I'm trying to use my weird resume to like sell them something weird. Like, dude, have you listened to my, like, I also wanted to go very like patriarchal about it. I don't know if that's the right word, misogynist. I don't know. I wanted to be very like, this is what's wrong with chiropractic, that you are limiting the creativity of new graduates and being fucking boring. So I knew I couldn't say any of that. So I didn't. Um, So then I was like, all right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make my stupid resume. So I go into Word and find a boring ass template. They, a lot of their templates had like a small like photo. Um, like if you look, it'll have like just like a headshot. I didn't even include one of those because they asked for one with no photo. So I found one that was no photo. Type in like the most basic of information that I all pulled from the thing I had sent them onto this. And so then I'm like, all right, here's what I'll do. I will save the document as lame ass resume for blank university. Ha, ha, ha. So I save it and I go to attach it and send it back. And like clear as day, you can see this attachment is titled lame ass resume for X university. And then a patient comes and I'm like, all right, I'm just, I'm not going to send this quite yet. I'm just going to sit with this. And so I adjust a couple patients and I come back to my computer and I think about like, okay, do you really want to do this? And you know what's hard is like the devil on my shoulder is like, yeah, I want to do this. I want to show power. Honestly, what it comes down to, here's let's real talk, is my ego was hurt. So what I wanted to do was inflict shame back on them. I wanted them to feel embarrassed for what they did to me, right? That's the heart of it. So I'm like, no, no, I'm not going to do that. So I just titled it Resume. And I attached it. I didn't say anything, though. I just sent the document. I didn't have it in me to be like, hey, Pat, here it is. Hope they like this. I just sent it. No words, nothing. Um, And what's funny is, is I haven't heard back if I'm approved to speak yet. So here's like, so yes, there was like the Jesus message of like, you're just trying to hurt people, hurt people. That's just what you're trying to do. Like, be better than that. But then also, I know myself well enough that in the moment I would have gotten that like, yeah, show you, but I haven't heard back. Now, right now I gave them what they asked for. So if for some reason they don't approve me, I'm going to be like, whatever, that's weird. Um, Cause I did what you wanted and I wasn't even mean about it. Um, but if I had been mean, you know, I would be sitting here just riddled with anxiety and diarrhea that I overstepped. And now there's going to be like, I'm going to be blacklisted from speaking at this college and will never be approved because I got one line of sass in. So there you go. Story time with Lauren. 
evolving out of the ego and trying to become a better person. But also, can we just all go you to that, like, that college? Come on. All right. Let's do a listener highlight. This one comes in via the Instagram. Um, it's a DM from Matt Ottoman. I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name yet. Um, I, or correctly, I've shared him on stories. He, I haven't been to this clinic, but it seems really cool. He's working with like a pediatric PT. He's a pediatric Cairo. I think it's really cool what they're doing, their model. Um, and I would love to have a pediatric Cairo on my staff just to be able to help. So you, it's like called Kin Active Kids. Go follow it because I think what they're doing is neat. Um, but he says that last episode about the pediatrician was great. So if you don't know what he's talking about, that is last week's episode when the pediatrician says no. Um, it's crazy the amount of PTs that send hate to. I guess it comes down to a lack of communication on our end trying to change that. Um, so thanks for listening to the episode and supporting it and liking it. Um, but also, Matt, thanks for doing some of that on the ground work. We've had a lot of people on the podcast this year so far that are doing a lot of like the big work, right? Like the work of changing laws and sitting down at big national conventions and doing that level of communication. Um, and I think that can be really encouraging, but also make a lot of us who are just doing our day-to-day -day small town clinic thing um, feel like we're not doing enough. And I, I think that this is just a prime example. The clinic he works with is awesome of just have like, we have a pediatric chiropractor or pediatric PT who comes in as a patient. Is she, does she get it? No, not quite yet, but she comes. And I refer to PTs. Did they send back to me? No, 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 they don't. I can count on zero hands how many times I've got actually gotten a physical therapy referral, but that's okay. That's okay. The pediatric physical therapist recently asked for research on ADHD and whatnot. So I'm like, okay, we are paving that path. So today's guest is, was a fun conversation. Poor Kirby probably doesn't even know where to start because we just started talking about um, stockings, stocking stuffers, sorry, not like, like lady stocking, like pantyhose. No, no, no. Um, we're two gals jabbing, but we're not... Uh, talking about pantyhose. Um, so you're just going to, you know, enter the conversation with us. So this is Dr. Margie Smith, and she's a chiropractor known for her clear, outgoing style of communication with chiropractic patients and doctors alike. Um, I bet you she's got a cool resume because she's got a very fun personality like me, and I bet her resume isn't boring. Or maybe it is because she sent in the fun one and then she just got squashed and then creativity. <sighs> yeah, you can tell I hold a grudge. Anyways, back to Dr. Margie. Uh, since 2004, Dr. Smith has successfully started multiple chiropractic practices and speaks in front of audience on how to run a low stress, high profit, low overhead chiropractic practice. Dr. Smith has a passion for not only helping her own chiropractic patients achieve better health and wellness, but also helping chiropractic practices transition into the cash-based practice of their dreams. Um, she's got some really cool, so she refers to um, her practice style as the micro practice. There's some links below um, in the show notes. Go check it out. Just very, very cool lady. Very cool lady. All right, let's pray. Dear God, thanks for the ego. Um, I'm sure it serves a purpose, um, but I would assume the ego is like the Enneagram in which it's not a box in which you gave us to live in, instead a box for us to grow out of. Um, and that process of growing out of that box, that, that process of being able to look at like, no, 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 that's not, why, why did that show up? And learning how to respond with love and patience um, is, is, I believe, your goal for all of us, all of us to evolve to this higher level of emotions and empathy. Um, and although I may not be quite there to the empathy for the college, I patience and um, pausing 
pausing and eliminating impulsiveness and anger and the need to make others feel bad about themselves. So thank you for um, self-awareness. Thank you for self-awareness that each of us is on our own journey of learning who we are and why we do things and why we respond the way we do and why we feel the way we feel. And the more self-awareness each of us can have, the more we can really reflect on our actions and move towards uh, more Christ-like energy, more Christ-like action uh, here on earth while we're here. In your name we pray, amen. Okay, so here is my conversation with Dr. Margie Smith. Hope you like it. I want to start every episode in 2022 with my guests just being like, so what shit show is going on in your life? <laughs> so my yeah. day is pretty much entailed like moving my kitchen back into my, from my dining room into my kitchen, nice. having my dog not poop on the, my, our 10 week old puppy not poop on the floor. Oh, um, and then separating gifts to figure out who I bought too much for and who I bought. Right. Too much. Yeah. Right. The, the tally system. Right. Because, yes. oh yeah, my kids are old enough that they are constantly like, wait, she got five gifts. I got four gifts. Like, I'm like, oh, but this one gift is like as much as these two gifts. Yeah. Like, oh. how old are your kids? They are seven, nine and 12. Oh yeah. Those are like tally system ages. Dude, the worst is the fucking book fair at school, which they still have the book fair at school. I still have to go to the book fair at school. Like Scholastic has had like the monopoly on book fairs for like decades, right? No, so I my, know. my kids are like, no, well, the book fairs this week. We have to go. I'm like, but do we like you have Christmas in a week? Do we really uh, have to go? So then I was like, fine, I'll go to the freaking book fair and my mom is visiting my mom and dad are visiting from chicago and my mom's like oh i'll give them 20 dollars each i'm like no because we've done this before where they get money but then they don't get the concept of like well your one twenty dollar might buy this one book because it's bigger and it's more expensive versus then that sister got two books because she got two nine dollar books they're right? just mad that she got two books right because the tally the the constant like you know keeping tabs on stuff and i'm just like oh here we go again. I'd love yeah. to say we mature out of that as chiropractor or as like adults, but I feel like I'm just like still tallying our tallying no. our shit. No, 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 no. Oh yeah. I learned a long time ago to buy my own stocking stuffers because um because how many Christmases had to go by that like, mama, why didn't Santa bring anything in your stocking? You were so good, but you're such a good mama. It's like, oh, that's okay. And then now it's like, oh, Santa knew that I wanted these Kendra Scott earrings. That's awesome. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And when you're an adult, stocking stuffers can get very expensive. Because they're small and tiny. And oh, that's look at that one. Eye cream. Oh, I love it. Thank you, Santa. Santa. <laughs> My girlfriend does that. And it's like a, that is just like a money move. I'm like, I like, I was like what, a year, a couple of years ago. I was like, damn it. I like, he didn't get anything in my stocking. She's like, you expect your husband to buy stocking stuffers. I buy my own for years. I'm like, Oh, brilliant. Great idea. And I bet your husband appreciates it. No, then he started feeling kind of bad about it. So there was one year, a couple of years ago where it was like double dipped of like, where my stocking is like, there was a bottle of Vuv in the stocking. And then like, earrings and bracelet like shoved in like mama wow you got a lot of stuff in your stocking this year I'm like oh I know boom in the stocking is like baller I it, love it. it actually it was laying down because it was holding the stocking down too much so he's like later on he's like I just had to lay it down because I couldn't like it wouldn't stay in the stocking I'm like all right that's great I'll take it all right well after this interview I will absolutely be going to my husband and saying like all right we need to talk about my stocking uh, <laughs> here's I what I heard here's some suggestions and some what Margie's what's done <laughs> yeah yes, oh yes. Margie okay oh, well you you got the question I do and I have printed the question I have <laughs> jotted down some potential ways that we can go because okay so I'll read it just because our listeners don't have it um but I'm so glad to have you on because I've actually been sitting on, is there a time, a date on that question that I, it's been a minute. I think so I might've thought it's been two years. Oh, minutes. well now I'm embarrassed. I wish you would that out loud. December 19th. 
Well, this poor person is just like sort of waiting, waiting. <laughs> okay, but here's here's my problem. Here's my problem. I am an Enneagram three. Me too. <gasps> oh shoot, I can't use that as an excuse then. Okay. Well, this is wonderful. I love threes. They're my favorites and sevens. I really like sevens. Um, what's your husband, by the way? Do you know? You know, I don't know. Okay. I just have a theory that like a lot of threes end up marrying nines and stuff, but. Oh, I'll have to have him do it. I'm not sure what his is. Would he be willing to do it? Oh, totally. Yeah. He's. Is he? I'll ask and then I'll, I'll ask and I'll text you. Okay. Sounds good. So anyways, where was I going with it? Oh, so I get this question and my gut was, nope, it's not possible not possible and I didn't know how to break the poor person's heart yeah and then I heard your talk and was just like okay it is 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 possible so it's possible let me read the question and then we can jump in and I will just kind of play the like asshole advocate of like yeah but no I'm just kidding that's fine no you totally can be the devil's advocate totally it is totally 2019 it is literally two years ago oh poor morgan so this comes from morgan and you know what all don't worry i know follow morgan on social media and she has continued her life despite putting it on hold so it says after your episode with dr nona which would have been a red flag from a long time ago yeah maybe um, don't say that part (laughs) Dude, we're just going to edit all of this out. So it makes me look bad. Totally. One thing totally. my listeners are used to is me not coming across like an idiot. So anyway, okay. I graduated in September. So just to keep everyone in now, this is 26 months ago. And began working 20 hours in office a week as an associate at a practice that I love. The main doc also works 20 hours in office. She's been in practice for five years. I'm a mom of two, ages two and one. So update, therefore. And, and one on the way. So by now it's four, a now four, three, children. and one year old. All right, folks, right into so she slays the day. We will return your call shortly. <laughs> All right, so she's a mom of three. Um, and she wants to be able to practice in a fulfilling way, but not be away from her babies 40 to 60 hours a week. I hustle when I'm at the office and currently growing my side of the practice. Given your experience in the field, I'm curious to know your thoughts or advice on how to be successful if I'm starting out part time and not jumping into a 60 hour work week. And here was where I brought up the Enneagram three thing is because I'm like, uh, successful. How are you going to make a bunch of money and see a ton of patients only working 20 hours a week and not hustling your ass off? Because that was my experience starting out. But I'm also me too. Me too. Okay, so I would love to hear your your story and how you kind of got to this micro practice, and then we can get to Morgan. She's got time. We waited long. <laughs> She's still there. She's waited long enough. She could wait five more minutes. <laughs> um. So my practice, so I graduated from Logan in 04 and got married in 04 and then opened my practice in 05 in downtown Chicago. And uh, that was my first full-time job ever. I never had a job before that. I mean, I had jobs, but not a full-time job before. And so when I opened to that practice in 2005, um, it was a full-time practice. I was there from 7 a.m. until 8 p.m. some days. I worked on the weekends, uh, marketing events. Was this your I own practice or an associate? My own practice, brick okay. and mortar, my own practice. I opened on my own straight out of school. I never worked as an associate anywhere. And um, that was pretty much thanks to shadowing a lot of chiropractors in chiropractic college. Like I kept a word document on all the chiropractors I shadowed and all the stuff I learned in their offices. And it pretty much made me realize, yeah, I can do this on my own. I don't think I have to work for anybody else. If, um, if, I, if I didn't know you were a three, I would have just figured it out. Right you know now. that I am now. Yep. So I, um, so I opened my own practice and it was really successful. Uh, Oh, great practice, downtown Chicago, very small space. It was only, it was less than like 800 square feet, but huge overhead, $12,000 a month overhead, uh, heavily insurance dependent practice. Cause that's what we all did. And, um, yeah. And I just hustled like, like, you know, we heard earlier, like I hustled to make that practice the success it was, but I killed myself doing it. Um, but I didn't have a family. I just got married. We had no kids. We had two cats. And we lived in Chicago. And so it was just like, I worked my ass off in that practice. 
then we decided that we were done with the Midwest, moved to California. So I sold my practice. We sold everything we owned pretty much, packed a truck, moved to California. Uh, and then in San Diego, I worked as an independent contractor in another office. So, you know, not my own, I mean, my own practice, but I'm sharing a percentage and all that kind of stuff. And it was a very uh, fair deal. It was awesome. Then we moved to Denver, which was an unexpected stop in our life um, for a couple of years. I didn't practice there because I was too busy having children kind of close together. Then we moved back to California. Now I'm in a town that's just outside of Sacramento in Northern California. Um, We've lived here about six years, a little, a little after like a year of moving here, I just had this push to open a practice again because people were asking like, oh, you're a chiropractor. Uh, where are you? I mean, you know, there's no female chiropractors around here. And, you know, like when your kids start getting into school and stuff, you start to hang out with other moms of other kids that your kids get along with. Like that's where your friend like group goes to. And I just kept feeling this push and push to open a practice my husband and I sat down together and said, okay, let's do it, but you can't do what you did in Chicago. And an associateship is just doesn't seem like it's going to be worth your time and effort and experience. And the independent contractor thing was okay. But again, you're like under somebody else's like, like umbrella. So it was pretty much like, okay, if I'm opening a practice, these are my hard yeses and hard no's for this practice. And then that's kind of where the micro practice kind of was born from there was just based on how I opened that practice, how I opened this practice that I'm in now. Okay. So tell me what you mean by micro practice. So it is micro in the sense, like you see me in my office right now, this is my whole office. I rent a room from another chiropractor. Uh, everything that I have is totally separate from the chiropractor. So I have my own corporation, all my own uh, DBAs, business license, county license, you know, all that stuff, malpractice, everything is my own. Um, my practice is my own. My patients are my own. Collections are all mine. But the micro is more like my stress level is next to none in this practice. Uh, my overhead is about $1,500 a month before I pay myself versus the 12000 that I had to stress about every month in Chicago. Um, and just like, like the profit, the profit is like ridiculous. Like I easily cover my overhead if I adjust 30 people in a month. Well, I can easily do that in like a day or two right now. So everything else is just gravy on top of that. Okay. So then is, are you out of network? With I don't, yeah, I, don't, I zero insurance. Yep, yep, yep. Oh. I are, um, uh, I have yeah zero insurance. Um, I have like two Medicare patients left. I'm kind of phasing Who them doesn't? out. Who yeah. doesn't have like two Medicare patients? I know. Left? I know. I'm kind of. I mean, not phasing <laughs> them out because it makes me feel. It makes it sound like I'm waiting for them to die, but I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I promise I'm not. Don't die. Don't oh. die. Um, I'm just Michael not. practice a boutique practice. Pretty Are much. You? Yep. Okay. Yep. It's like a boutique style practice. Um, you know, like I said, we're, I'm in like a chiropractic office, but my only obligation with the other chiropractor is paying her a flat monthly rent. Right. Mm -hmm. And then covering whatever other expenses I have to have every month. And then everything else is just, you know, gravy on top. Okay. So how would you approach Morgan's question? Like, so first off, I don't know if Morgan wants to stay the associate route like a, a like a part-time practice full-time success in a mm -hmm. associate route or if she's considering going into her own practice route right so i've heard you do these on podcast yeah, yeah podcast before where it's like okay well let's say that you're going to stay the associates route okay so then let's go down that trajectory of what that would look like. Let's say you want to open your own practice route. Well, the, here's the trajectory of what that would look like. And I pretty much would explain how I kind of created my own practice, the practice I have now, and how it can be a massive success for any mom of young kids. I mean, that's literally the story of my life right now. That's why I built a micro practice was to stay, to be able to stay home with kids, right? I'm finishing this interview and I got to go home and pick up my, or go to school, pick up the kids, right? There's no there's no working until 6 p.m. Any, anymore. There's no working weekends like I used to, right? So the associate route, I mean, there are things that you could do in both that I would say uh, would work. The only question I would have, because you probably have more experience having 
associates, I've never hired an associate before, is you can chime in on, well, what should her um, plan look like? How should she be reimbursed to make it a success for her? I mean, I am kind of a Scrooge when it comes to working where it's like if I had an associate who only wanted to work 20 weeks, I would be like, or 20 hours a week, I'd be like, I can do that. But like, your pay is going to clearly reflect that. So I would probably, I would hope that she's set up where it's almost not a base salary where, well, so maybe, maybe that's what you can kind of interject is like, you know, you've got the experience there. Cause I, I don't know, like associateships, right. Have like, everyone has like their horror stories that they've heard about being an associate and how they get paid next to nothing sometimes. And so, yeah. So when you're 20 hours a week, it's kind of like, you know, the other thing too is, you know, why and you're just half in it. So right. like, this is, this is, this is where I struggle of like, you own your own business. You're your own thing. Right. You, how many hours a week do you work ish? Uh, about 20. Okay, perfect. So do you feel, and okay, and this is my, my, my workaholic is going to show for a second. Mm -hmm. Do you feel half in to no. your club? Nope. No, no, only because I, I feel, um, so I look at the, I look at what I've built, right? I opened this practice. Uh, I opened my Chicago practice. It cost me about 30,000 to open that practice. Um, I opened this practice with less than 3000, right? So already it was like, okay, this, I think I can make a big success as meaning like it's worth my time, effort and energy. I am contributing to our family's household income, not just income, but the, you know, shit you can write off on a business all the time. Um, so it's, it's a net positive for us, for everybody. And from the beginning, it was always in the black. I never had a month in the red in this business always, because it doesn't, it doesn't take that much to cover, cover the nugget. Yeah. Right. Yep. So then when I look, then I look at like years overall, I look at my years overall. So like my year in 2020, my collections in 2020 were 35% greater than they were in 2019, right? So pandemic year, my business is 35% up. Holy shit. In 2021 now, my collections are up 98% from the end of 2020. Holy shit. I don't work that much more than I used to. Like I've always kind of worked around this amount of time. Um, so I don't, you know, am I making it, am I making millions of dollars? No, I'm not going to sit here and lie to, lie to people that I'm just like killing it that way. But as far as like the impact I have for patients, the community, my own house, like, yeah, I am thoroughly happy with it. Would I like to at some point? Well, and so there, then, you know, so me being the three, right? I, I have this practice. I have my great life at home. I have what I think is a good balance there. But then I see an opportunity to like, oh, I can help other chiropractors have this kind of practice, right? So the three created a whole other yes. business of a, um, a micro practice, which is a course, which is an eight week course that has content that people purchase, right? And I'm their coach along the way, et cetera. So you know, although I'm not, like I said, I don't have, I can see more in my practice. I just don't want to at the, at the moment because I also now have the side micro practice practice as well or business as well. So, you know, it's, yeah. If I didn't so, have that, I don't know if I, because at the end of the day, how much money can we make in practice? If we are, if I'm the person I have to be here, how many people can I see within a week right? That cap is always going to be there for us. Even if we get associates, right? We're always going to be capped out at some, at some point. And so at this point, I'm kind of like, let me see what I want to in practice, but let me build up another business that can then be something that kind of runs itself versus having to only rely on my practice income. Absolutely. So let's assume that she wants to start a practice. Somebody wants to start a practice for and be in office 20 hours a week. What are some of the app, like suggestions that you have to make that successful? 
my top suggestion is define your ideal patient because everything else kind of happens once you know who you are as a as a as a chiropractor what you're good at what your expertise is in what you're like what did you get you know continuing education in what do you love do you love to work in sports or on animals or on babies right so define who your, your ideal patient is then say no to people that just, one's hard oh i don't know though because it, it, it <laughs> Again, well, think about it this way. Think about it from this perspective. I have, I have such a practice. I have a practice that I don't need every warm body that's coming into my office, right? Yep. In Chicago, I needed those people. Those people needed to be there to cover my overhead. That's just, I mean, don't get me wrong. Of course, I mean, I'm coming from a serving heart of wanting to help them, but I needed them to cover my overhead. I didn't like all of them, right? And I didn't get into this kind of business just to like clock in nine to five. I wanted to get into this kind of a business because I love connecting with people. I love being with people that I mesh with. Right. And so I found it, found myself having a practice, like, you know, kind of half and half people I loved. And then people I saw in the schedule that I was like, oh shit, Ugh, fine. Right. And so you just kind of deal with those. Now I, I don't have any of those people anymore. I only have Talk people about that I a lack of mental drain too. Not Absolutely. only are you physically exhausting your body, but like those people are mentally exhausting. It's always the one who comes in late. They're the last patient of the day who just won't shut up and you just want to leave, right? Like those people are just like, all right, bye Doris, I got to go. Like, bye. <laughs> the police are going to call me soon because my kid's sitting at the school sidewalk by themselves. Like I got to go, right? So, um, So I say no a lot to people, but I don't say it in like, no, I can't take you. No, it's more so in a, hey, something within the conversation with them as a new patient over the phone, something was a trigger to me that I was not the right person for them, right? Whether you don't it, say that to them. I don't, I do sometimes. I do say, I don't think I'm the right chiropractor oh, for you. I thought you were going to say there's something that you said that triggered me. I was like, oh my God, I just pooped my no, pants. No, 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 <laughs> not trigger. Well, you know what? You just brought up some PTSD for me. And uh, no, in my- in my mind, this is the real that's yeah. going on in my oh, mind. Yes. Something yep. in the conversation was like, this person's not the right fit for me. I'm not the right fit for them, whatever the situation might be. But then I do give them like another place to go. I just don't leave them abandoned because I do think that everybody should be under chiropractic care, but I believe that I'm not the right chiropractor for every person, nor is the every person the right patient for me based on my life, right? I have people who want to get adjusted at six o'clock after work. Sorry, Dan, it's not going to work out with me. Let's just let me find you. I do know these chiropractors who do have those hours. And I think you would be much suited there because I think you're going to need this much care that I can't provide for you because I don't work that late, right? So there are things like that or there are things where it's just like the clinical wheelhouse is not mine, right? I don't like working on extremities. I don't, you know, I'm not a like just pop in, you know, I just want to get cracked kind of chiropractor, right? People are on a plan with me for the most part. It's not the like, Hey, just, I just want to pop in so you can crack my back. I'm like, ah, that's like a chiropractic swear word. And we don't like that. And Oh, I'm so sorry. Right. But they'll never say it again. So I do say no a lot, but again, I do it because, um, I have a waiting list at the moment, so I don't have room for more people if they're not going to be the right fit. And plus, how do you not just add an hour? Oh, see, this is what I think it comes down to though, is like, what's the, what is she talking about with success? I know. I, that's, I was just going to say, what is her yeah. definition of success? And I think mm -hmm. everybody's definition is much, much different. Mm -hmm. And again, I would, I add hours where I can, but like at the, I like, I do, I am literally maxed out with the hours that I can add without me starting to lose my mind and yep. everybody feeling it. Yeah. And so I think that, I mean, that would be one of my biggest pieces of like, advice on it of like I believe that you can be successful doing anything so is it possible to be successful working 20 hours a week absolutely as long as your view of success aligns with that right because what I would worry about is that poor Morgan is like in her day-to-day -day life is like I am so happy I have these three children 
you know, I have this balance, my relationship right. with God, with my husband, with my friend, like all of this is great. Right. And then she goes to a chiropractic conference and here's like my ass talking about blah, 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 my social media marketing person, da, 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 right. and like this and that and going like, oh, I'm not like Lauren's success. And so then I'm not success. And it's like, no, Lauren has problems of her own. Like no, it's Lauren not- has her own definition of success. Right. Yep. And so like, you just have to really think about what, you know, like, and hold on to it tight. Right. And I think from that too, just holding on to that tight, learning from the people who maybe aren't your same success definition doesn't mean you still can't learn from them, right? I never thought that I would have a 500 patient a week practice. I worked in one of those, actually I covered a chiropractor's office once in San Diego. um, And in three days, I adjusted 400 people in three days. I came home from that, that week and I was exhausted. And now, you know, in his defense, I, I like, he, he's worked up to that, right? He has an endurance and he's worked up to that. And I just come into this office cold turkey and, and walk out at the end of the week. And I'm just like <gasps> drained. Right. And so I, I never, I, I didn't think I would, who knows I might in the future. Right. I still have a big career ahead of me. Um, so, so when I heard speakers speak, it's not that I heard those speakers and they would talk about thousands of week, thousands of patients a week that I'd be like, oh, fuck them. I would just be like, oh, that doesn't necessarily apply to me totally, but I love these concepts, X, Y, Z concept. But I get that not a lot of people can do that in their minds, that they'll like hear one part of something and just say, oh, well, that's not me. I'm not going to listen to what that person has to say. And that was also why micro practice kind of came to fruition because I got shit when I went to Parker. So I've gone to Parker Vegas for years. I used to work for cash practice, which is a like software company in, in chiropractic. Mm-hmm. So when I was in those years where I wasn't practicing, uh, I worked for cash practice as their director of business development. And I went to Parker Vegas all the time. I went to all the seminars. I was networking, schmoozing with people, um, building the business with cash practice um, for them. And then I started speaking as well. And so it was a great experience. And I have all these friends, all these people that I met for years going to Uh, Parker, for example, the last time I went to Parker two years ago, I spoke for the first time on micro practice. And all of a sudden I had a bunch of guys, guys, men who now suddenly are telling me, oh, that's what you're doing now. That's not a serious business model. I would never see you. If I, if I was a patient, I would never see a chiropractor. Oh no, Dan, I would not take you word for word. And I'm like, oh, Oh, all right. I got it. I got you. And then again, the three in me is just like, oh, so you think you think that's what I was going to ask is like the three in you. Like, so for those that are like not a part of this conversation, um, threes are like vain as fuck. We want my version of success is whatever you think success is. And I want you to think I'm doing it. Like, this is real talk. Like, so the immature three, of course, I'm matured and I don't. Right, know. right. Of course, um, you've evolved. But like, how was that moment? How was that moment? How did that make you feel about yourself? Because like, did, it didn't did bother me. Like, if anything, it drove me, it drove me harder, which has always driven me in life. My whole life, I always was driven by somebody telling me I couldn't, especially when a man would tell me I couldn't do something. Um, And I mean, not to like bring up like family dad issues or anything, but I specifically remember a car ride. I was eight years old. My brother was 10 years old. My dad's driving, mom's in the passenger seat, uh, me and brother in the back seat. And uh, my dad or mom asked us what we wanted to be when we grew up. And I, my brother said, uh, I want to be a lawyer. And my father, my mother and father are from Poland, so they both have very thick, thick Polish accents. And my father is like, oh, oh, Tommy, that is good job. Yeah, that would be very good job for you to be a lawyer. Right. And then and then he says, Margie, what do you want to be? And I said, I want to be a doctor. And my dad says, you know what, Margie, I don't think so. That's not going to be a good job. You're going to be a mom and you're going to be a wife. I don't think that's a good job for you. And so I'm like, oh. Right. And but then later on, like, you know, little Margie's like, well, no, screw that. I can do that. Why? Who's going to tell me I can't do that? 
Oh, no. Now, obviously, my father's very proud of me. Blah, oh, blah, yeah, blah, yeah, blah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we're all scarring our children. Your poor dad is probably like, I don't even remember that. <laughs> like, he doesn't. Like, oh, like, he, totally uh, doesn't. he doesn't remember all, it whatsoever. No, no, we're, we're all scarring our children. We're just going to find out about it later in therapy. Oh, um, no. I know. So the micro practice, it feels like one of the like pillars to make a successful micro practice beyond defining your own version of success um, is the low overhead. Correct. That kind of is like a necessity. Correct. And I mean, anybody can do that. Even if you have a traditional model, you can still reduce your overhead. I've had plenty of people that I've worked with where they didn't necessarily have the micro model, like a renting a room from another chiropractor. They had their own traditional model. Um, micro practice builds out this really nice um, systems approach to everything. So like all the systems that I have in place to cover like what a CA would do, because I also, well, now I have a part-time staff person who helps me like 10 hours a week. I used to not have anybody uh, and do it all on my own. But like, even when she's not around to help me, I have all these systems that kind of work beautifully in the background that don't take a lot of time and effort on a regular basis, but you set them up so that, like I said, they work for you. So, um, you know, so traditionally, yes, I say, if you're starting off a practice, um, then start small. And that means rent a room from somebody. Don't get this massive, gigantic space if you don't want to right away. And then build you into- you spending like much money on marketing either? I, like zero. I spend zero yeah. money on marketing. My marketing, you know, what used to be my marketing calendar that I, you know, the big paper mm -hmm. calendar and you'd write it all out. Oh yeah. I used to have events and BNI groups and lit tip groups and all those networking groups. I was, I was in every single one of them in Chicago here. Nothing. I do nothing. I do, um, my, uh, really bad version of social media marketing, um, or Facebook or my Instagram posts. Um, just that's it. Like, I don't, I don't, I post stuff, but I'm not, I don't have a good plan when it comes to posting things as I should. So I apologize, Lauren, don't be mad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you're not spending a thousand dollars a month on Facebook ads and no, Google. I don't, nothing. Right. And so, yeah, because you're not, you're not trying to fill 40 hours a week. I mean, right. it is one of those things where it's just like at this certain point. So I worked by myself until I think about 50 patients a week. Right. And then the profitability just went out the wind. Like right. since then, 10 and a half years ago, it has been this treadmill of like, okay, well now I need to hire my first CA. Well, now I need to see more patients just to break even right. to come to that CA. Right. And now I need another table to see the number of people that I needed to see. So now, I, and then I need to move into a slightly bigger space. Right. And now all of a sudden I need to, uh, now I'm going to start marketing because I moved into a bigger space. Right. And then I need another CA. And so I feel like the last 10 and a half years, I mean, I'm definitely making more money than I was at 50 people a week, but right. it was just kind of this moment where we, um, built a beautiful building oh my gosh it's we finally um bought and built and it's gorgeous and it's my dream um and we did a parking lot i can now like eye up how much a parking lot costs because i've done it three times um, nice so the first parking lot costs about fifteen thousand dollars in wisconsin money that's nothing in your money over in california wisconsin, yeah, wisconsin dollar is that like is that like canadian what is that <laughs> right <laughs> it's like real money compared yeah. to like california so um so we move in and within like two months it's very apparent the parking lot's not big enough so we needed to buy the plot of land next to it and pave it and so it's like, well, great. That, Cause never in my mind was it like, well, what if you just didn't see that many people, but no, it's like, no, 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 no. Now I need to see 60 more people a week. And so it's just this like thing. And so it really comes back to that, like defining success and being okay. Right. Okay. Another question. This is yes. Morgan is asking so many great questions. I know. How so do you handle the last okay if you haven't listened to enough episodes most of them end up turning into like 
ther- therapizing me. Mm-hmm. Like, so yeah. welcome. Um, how do you feel like you're growing when you're maxed out and you have no intention of uh, air quotes growing? How do I feel like I'm growing? Well, I don't care about growing anymore right this moment. Like I with the say. business. Right. The business at the moment has uh, slightly exhausted me this year um, only because if I've, I'm, I'm going to almost double what I made last year. Right. Right. So, yeah. So that, in that sense, from a patient volume perspective, I'm not really worried or stressed or feel unsuccessful that I don't have more space to put people. But what I will say is on the docket for 2022 is my prices are going to be going up. So, um, you know, supply and demand. I mean, if this is, this is what's happening, I am increasing my prices. Um, and so from that perspective, if I do nothing else and see the same volume of, you know, see the same volume of maxing out my schedule, then I'll make more money in 2022. Um, I will start to, as my children need me less, I start opening up more time, right? Mm -hmm. So right now I only stay after school hours, like one day a week. I probably will start staying a little bit longer or or maybe another day in the week just to like, again, add more time. So as I can add more time in the near future, I will, but I just don't want to right now at the moment. So it's great. It's great. I, this is, this is very helpful. This is very helpful for Morgan. This is very helpful for me. Okay. So besides, okay. So I've heard clean systems. So ideal patient say no to yep. people, clean systems, um, have some sort of a social media website kind of situation present and make sure that that communication is congruent everywhere. So again, like the people with like the knee problems like aren't really even calling me anymore because they read read my website, they read everything. And they're like, I don't think she can help me with my knee. And I'm like, you're right, Jack, I can't help you with your knee. Um, and then I would say the other big way that Why I- Why is it always so funny when you name them? It's just- You can so picture funny. the Dans and the Jacks. Picture. You could picture them. Doris. I know. Doris. Damn it, Doris. Um, no, I'm kidding. Uh, And then I, so when I first started this practice, okay, so when I had zero patients, right, how do I, how did I make, how did I get patients in the door? So I started um, social media. I had my website. I started my Facebook group or Facebook page. I started adding friends to it. I started kind of just like letting people know in the area, hey, I'm starting my practice. And I did that before I actually opened my door so that on day one, I already had patients scheduled, new patients scheduled. Um, Then I started Um, finding other business people that I can connect with as power partners, right? So if I have my ideal patient and there are, you know, a woman between the ages of 20 and uh, 50 and all these things like that I define out, um, one of them was obviously prenatal, right? So I start speaking with and meeting with all the midwives in the area, all the doulas, all the women who do placenta encapsulation, anything associated with natural childbirth or uh, pregnancy, I start meeting with them and networking with them and saying, hey, I've got this great website of my practice that I'm building. I'd love to add you to it as one of my partners. Would that be okay with you? And like, no one said no to that question. And then they are like, well, yeah, could we add you to our website? Yeah, that would be great. Thank you so much. And then suddenly I'm getting calls from these people's clients, right? Because now I'm that chiropractor, you know, in the area. So that was so many new marketing people get that just at Kairos get it ass backwards where they reach out and they're like, hi, I'm a new prenatal chiropractor in the area. I'd love to grab, buy you coffee and tell you about Mm. what services I provide. And then like, as like somebody who's like really busy in practice and like doesn't need, you're like, would you? Mm -hmm. Great. I would love to hear about you. No, no, I just, uh, well, because it ter- turns into, again, the difference between a, like the fear, like, oh my God, I'm not going to make it mentality. And so then you make bad decisions when you're in that mindset versus the like, okay, you know, my overhead's not that big. I don't have to stress that hard to make it. And then you have a little bit more room. I feel like in my practice model to make mistakes, because if something didn't hit, 
right? With like, whatever, like a social media post or something like that. It's not going to kill me because I didn't spend any money on it. You know, I'll just remember that in the future. Like people don't like to hear about whatever it was I posted and that's fine. Right. Um, so yeah, so that was the biggest ways that I built my practice initially was, um, social media, my small social media presence that I had, and just starting to connect with other business owners in the area who had, you know, like, you know, the same ideal patients, but we did different things. We're in different lanes. And then from there, it was all patient referrals and constant speaking on the nervous system, how that connects to your overall health and wellness, sympathetic, parasympathetic, right? And all the things that a lot of chiropractors don't talk about is where people became extremely drawn to me. Like, oh my gosh, I heard that you help with just overall health and wellness, not just back pain. Yeah, I do. Great. Can I come in? Yeah, that'd be great. So I found that to be a different thing too that set me apart from other chiropractors in the area. Oh, absolutely. Um, so with the micro practice model, it doesn't sound like it has to be. So it is cash, not insurance, but it doesn't have to be long appointments. No. No, not at all. My patient appointment. Well, I think that's a big difference between the boutique. When I've heard like oh. people describe the boutique, and right. I'm saying it sassy, and I don't know why. I went into boutique. an accent. I don't know. It's time. Um, when people describe the boutique, I feel like there's very this like I spend a lot of time with them and am compensated appropriately. And I hear like, okay, so you spend a half hour and you charge two to three hundred dollars. You know, like, yeah. okay which is a whole new model. It's fantastic. Or not new model, but like it's a whole new model. But like yeah. you, I mean, I could be air quotes, high volume, or I guess it wouldn't be number of people. But like I could work 20 hours a week and still right. see two patients every five minutes. Like I like to. Yeah, absolutely. I, um, so the, so I don't, I don't know how it compares to how traditional offices or how you do it, but like, I will say I spend a ton of time with my patients. The first two visits, like yeah. a new patient appointment, about an hour. Report of findings, about 45 minutes. And it's like this very thorough investigation mm -hmm. initially. We're going to sit down. We're going to talk about your whole health, your whole health history, what your goals are. And then when you come back, I'm going to discuss what your, what your findings are and then what the plan is going to be based on three factors. Your plan is based on your current health status, which that's my job as a chiropractor to figure out during the examination right? What's your current health status? What are your goals, your health and wellness goals, which we talk about together and we write down together. And then my experience as a chiropractor with people, patients like you with similar backgrounds, right? So if somebody wants to run a marathon in six months, that's their goal, but their health status is hot mess express. Well, based on my experience with other patients like you, I'm going to need to see you pretty often initially, right? So I'm going to have to see you twice a week for three or four months. We're going to do some reassessments and reexaminations. After that, I'm going to see you once a week for the next two months, right? So I'm building yep. out these like long-term plans with patients at the very beginning. And so in my experience, it was always tough to justify some of that unless we went through this like journey together, right? This health and wellness journey that we're on. Um, so the first two visits, yes, are that long. Adjustments are 10 minutes at the most. Yep. Yeah. And even now, the days that I have my staff person here, I've actually reduced the adjustment times and I can see more people because she handles so much more of those details. So I am like less than that now with the days that she's here. So obviously you can see how you can see more people, yeah. you know, still in the times that I'm in if I start just getting a little bit more help here and there. Right. So. I like this. Okay. Do you have anything else? Um, I mean, I, I got a lot of stuff we can talk good, about. Good. Yeah, keep going. <laughs> um, no, 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 no. Uh, no, I'm kidding around. Like I can talk oh. about <laughs> you know, going back my, to the boob. My problems. Yeah, we can talk about boob. I can talk about all my all my pro no, I have no problems. I have 99 problems and chiropractic's not one. <laughs> um so yeah, no, not I mean, I think it's a great I mean, I feel like we're done. Like I feel like we're done. Can we just I know wrapping okay. that up Morgan you did change it. Morgan you can do this Morgan let us know how your life has been over the last few years can you call can you call in uh can you call into the hotline and just let us know what's going on with you because we're, we're kind of worried about you we abandoned yeah. you for two years 
Um, it was waiting for divine timing for the right guest. It, it's this is the two year anniversary of um, Lauren ignoring you. So let's just say it that way because it is in two days. It's the two year anniversary. Oh my gosh! And this episode won't air for a month, so it's going to be even worse. <laughs> Okay, so in summary, yes. yes, it is possible. Yes. Low overhead. Yep. Say no. Yep. Say yes to the right person. Correct. Clean systems, which I don't necessarily know what that means. Can you elaborate that just real quick in this summary? Um, clean systems means doing stuff in the back end that you don't have to do every single time a person's coming into the office. So schedule wise, I don't sit there and schedule people every single time they come into the office. Mm -hmm. I have a system on my, on my website that's connected to my schedule, get online, schedule yourself early and often. Cause you know, the schedule fills up. And so people are like on there, like, like scheduling themselves out weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks oh, and weeks because they just know I get full. Right. Now, like the people that have been with me for this whole practice time are like, we're really proud of you, Dr. Margie, but man, it's getting tough to make an appointment with you. I'm like, I know I always, and I always tell people too, Hey, you're my people. I have, I always have like appointments hidden that might not be visible online. So always let me know. You could always reach out or just show up and I'll try to make work it in. I, it always works out, right? So scheduling is a big one that I take care of. Payments are another big one. I'm not sitting here swiping credit cards every single time a person comes in. Cash practice I, change that, yeah. I saw 15 people today. I didn't take a credit card from anybody. I got it online. It's held online. My assistant, Lauren, runs the credit cards at the end of the week for me. And there we go. We're done with that. So credit cards, uh, payment scheduling, uh, and then advice. I can't tell you how often I found myself saying the same thing to people over and over and over again. Different people are asking me the same thing. Hey, what pillow do you like? Hey, what recommendation do you have for this? Hey, what about this? So then I created this page on my website that is my resources tab that I constantly send people to. Hey, what's your favorite pillow? Hey, I've got two that I really like. Go to my resources tab. Uh, you can find a section on pillows and you can see which one you like. If you want the one that I have to order for you, just let me know next time. Boom, go. And it's just kind of like more in their, uh, yeah. their responsibility versus like me later having to write it down for them. Oh, let me get a post-it note and write this down for you or email you later. They just wanted to talk. Like you weren't necessarily going to buy the pillow. Right. They just, they just, because yeah. Doris has nothing else to do. So she's just milling around your office. Um, so those would be, I would say the top three ways I make things very clean and super efficient. Cause I don't waste any time with people in the office to talk about like, like unnecessary stuff. Now don't get me wrong. If they want to talk about sports and weather and well, yeah, that's fine. We can chat for a second, but I'd rather spend the time talking on chiropractic, the nervous system, how it applies to their health and wellness, their subluxations, et cetera, et cetera. And I think too, one thing that I would add about the ideal patient not saying and saying no to people, when you have a practice filled with the people that you love, mm -hmm. that's all they refer to you are the same kind of people. So they don't mind being on a wait list that is about two or three months out right now because they're just like, no, I just want to get, I just want to get in the practice, whatever I have to do. I had one woman come into my practice a couple of weeks ago. She's pregnant. And so she's a new patient and she's, oh, I'm so glad to have gotten into your practice. Since I'm in your practice, will my baby automatically also get into the practice or, or does the baby have to go on the wait list? I'm like, baby on the wait list now. I'm like, uh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. You can, your baby can get in already. Like, I'm like, what am I supposed to say to that? All right. Yeah. Great. You're so exclusive. I know. What can I say? Well, there's also not a ton of prenatal and pediatric chiropractors. I mean, the other one that's like, that is full-time, maybe like, I don't know, 10 miles away from me. That chick's booked out till June at this point, And she is full-time in practice. And so their office is constantly sending me people like, oh yeah, doctor, you know, so-and-so said that we can see you earlier. And I'm like, no, not, I mean, yeah, maybe in March, I don't know right now, but um, anyway, so that's where I would go with like, those is like, you have a practice of people you love. That's all you're going to build and grow. And it's just going to turn into this like beautiful place that you love to go to every day. I love it.
Okay. So can you please tell people your clinic website? Because you've referenced it a couple times and I really want to stock it. Yes. Um, My clinic. Then, okay, go ahead. And then I wanted to know the micro practice. So like if people want more information on micro practice, where do yep. they go? Yep, yep, yep. So the clinic website is granitebaychiro.com. So G R A N I T E B A Y C H I R O.com. So that's my clinic website. Um, my Instagram is at Dr. Margie Cairo if you want to follow what I post on my Instagram pages with, uh, on my clinic. And then micro practice is, uh, www.themicropractice.com. Um, and that's where it talks all about, um, like what the micro practice is about. Some people who have been clients who have worked with me and their experience with it. Um, so that's where you can find more info there. Awesome. Awesome. Well, you're welcome, Morgan. You're welcome. Mar Margie, Margie, what do you, it's Margie. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You've said it like five times since you've already said it like a million times. In the end of the episode, I decided to forget. Um, we've solved, we've solved it. We've solved all the problems. So I think we've solved everything. Yep. I think that we've solved a lot like world problems in this, in this um, episode. And stocking stuffer problems. Stocking stuffer problems are like the number one. I mean, we could have ended right there. Cause that was really like, good. that's a, that's a money tip right there for any husbands possibly listen, listening. Get, get, there are some boys who listen. There get, uh, get, get, get your girl a bottle of, bottle of Vuv and Christmas is done. Oh. Baller move. That is. Um, and then if there's anything else you've learned, She Slayers, is that you can write in and sometime in your life, I will answer your question. <laughs> maybe, maybe at some point. Maybe, I don't know. There's no, there's like all these people being like, she hasn't answered my question. <laughs> <laughs> when you say, I'll get back to you, we'll get back to you as soon as we can. It might be, it might be a decade. <laughs> Oh, okay. She says, go, um, go stalk her. She's amazing. She's entertaining. Are you going to be at Parker? I am going to be at Parker. I am speaking at Parker again this year coming up. So I'm pretty excited. Are you going to be at Parker? Okay. So the day started with me having no intention of going to Parker, but coincidentally, I had three interviews today, which is more than I normally have. And every single one of you is going to be at Parker. And I'm like, well, now I have FOMO. Hmm. Sherry McAllister was like, let's go grab a drink. And I'm like, oh, shit, I want to do that. The three yes. needs to go do that. Yes, you should come to Parker. I mean, the Parker that you was once like decades and decades ago. I mean, I've only been going 17 years, but and I haven't gone every year. But like the Parker when I was in college is like, it's not the same Parker anymore. Right. It, like Parker in college was like 10,000 people, just like mega people on the stage. Right now it's not as it's not as huge but I feel like it's much more uh like much more worthwhile going like the speakers are always awesome the events are always great I mean clearly you're speaking okay. I mean obviously they're doing something right they keep asking me to come back um but no uh no I'm extremely like the first time I spoke on Parker's stage I think it was five four or five years ago when I spoke and I was working at cash practice I I started crying um at the end of my speech just saying you know when I the first Parker I went to I saw um Jack Canfield speaking um from stage he was the keynote speaker at that Parker and it was 2004 I saw him speak and I looked at him on stage and I was like man that would be so amazing to do someday I would love to get up on stage and speak in front of this many people so when I finished speaking I said thank you so much this has fulfilled a lifelong dream of mine and then boom, I start crying. And then as I'm crying, <laughs> people in the audience, I could see all their faces in the audience and they give you that like, that like, oh, 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 that's so sweet. Like, you know, like we got you girl. Like they were all like very supportive of like this woman crying in front oh, of them. But yes, so, awesome. so come to Parker, we'll have a blast. We'll get like a little, you should get like a, oh, go to Parker. And then you can have like maybe a little She Slay podcast. Uh, meet and greet, right? Because I bet a lot of people haven't met you before in person. You're like That's a celebrity creepy. when they see you at events, right? It's creepy. People know me and I don't know them. And then I, what's hard is I have like facial blindness. So like, I will remember you now, but like prior to this podcast, if I saw you again, I'd be like, 
hi, I'm Lauren. And you'd be like, we totally met. I'm like, oh, yeah. Like, I got like, your totally. Christmas card. We know each other, yeah. right? Um, <laughs> no, but you should totally do that. You could have like a little like she slay like cocktail hour and invite everybody from like the podcast to come. You are such a three. Oh my gosh. You are such a three. She's like coming. I like you. I like you a lot. I'm telling you, I've done, we did that in, we did that the first year I worked at cash practice. I literally started cash practice in October and we were planning Parker and I'm like, why don't we have a party? And they're like, what, what do you mean? And I'm like, let's have a party for all of our members, our clients at Parker. And they're like, Oh, that's a great idea. And that party started off all the parties at Parker with cash practice every year they would do it. It was always this massive, huge hit. Oh my gosh. So yeah, I'm all about like, well, let's just bring people together. And like I said, you're the celebrity behind the microphone before the, behind the podcast microphone. So bare minimum, you and I are going to be in the bar and you guys can come find us. The, give the people what they want, Lauren. And that's <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I'm getting embarrassed. It's <laughs> getting turned seven shades of red. Like okay. <laughs> they see, they hear you in their ears all the time every month. They just want to see you in person, just a little bit. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll talk. I'll talk to the curbster. We'll see. We're going to Mexico in in February, but I feel like we should make this happen too. Okay. Well, talk to me later, and we can arrange some kind of a joint kind of get together event. Sounds perfect. And good okay. luck with your stockings. Yes. Yes. Well, thank you too. Good luck with your future stockings as well. I can't wait to hear all about it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Chief Slayers. Um, go, like I said, go check out Margie. She's amazing. And I am sure that your course is awesome and just full of so much information. So, all right. Until next week. Bye. Bye.